There are seven characters that pros are abusing in their Overwatch League games and in the ranked ladder to simply dominate their opponents, getting tons and tons of easy wins. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down that top seven best heroes, and I'm gonna be giving you actionable tips and tricks so that you can take it, apply it into your games immediately, and start winning more games this season. All that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Kick it off with the first tier on our list, we have McCree. Now McCree is being used by Overwatch League pros right now because he can duel enemies and he provides the most pound for pound value on the table right now. If you're playing McCree, there's several things that you need to start doing immediately to get more value in your ranked games. The first thing that you should start doing is look to flash above the enemy Reinhardt shield. This is something that a lot of McCrees will do if you can really keep track of the enemy Zarya's bubbles or the Diva's DM, you can look to actually flash right above the enemy Reinhardt shield and double head headshot him and between you and the focus fire from your team often that will allow you to burst down Ryan's easily and that's an easy way for you to push to the point once the enemy Ryan is dead you can just play behind your Ryan you can push him with your team and just get to free fire on the enemy and it really turns the tables into your favor so definitely look to do that another thing that you should be looking to do on McCree is take off angles at proper moments to try to get value get picks on the enemy back line and make sure that you have flash so if someone chases you you can use your flash to punish them that's a really powerful thing about McCree you take an off angle and you go behind natural cover if any squishy pushes you you could actually use your flashbang to shut them down which is incredibly powerful about McCree and that's why he's really good at taking off angles another thing you could do on McCree is you could shut down divers of course and you really want to be punishing enemies that are trying to look for opportunities on your team something like a May that wants to push up and freeze your Ryan it's your job to zone him away and punish that May so make sure you do it each and every time if you don't that May is just gonna freeze your Ryan he's probably gonna die because he can't keep his shield up and that'll be the end of the team fight for you. The last thing that you need to do is make sure that you're consistent with dueling enemies and practice flashing and headshotting no matter how the enemy's moving. Sometimes when a tracer's blinking, jumping, or enemies are pushing up on you, when you flash them, they kind of fly in a sporadic pattern. It's hard to line up that headshot. The better you get at flashing an enemy, flashing the ground, flashing above them, and instantly snapping to the head and hitting those headshots, the more lethal you'll be on average. And if you get enough practice in, you'll be able to do this every time. I suggest try free for all so definitely do that you'll be instantly better on McCree now let's move on to the next character on our list that Overwatch League pros are abusing it's Reinhardt and Reinhardt's just the best shield tank right now in the meta he's extremely aggressive he can make tons of plays with his shatter and he's the number one tank that you should be playing as a main tank if you want to climb so the first thing that you should learn about Ryan is that you should fire strike along natural cover and corridors. The best target is the enemy Ryan, but you can often hit more than one person if you do this tactic. This allows the fire strike to be from surprise, so the enemy can't dodge it very easily. Another thing that you should really be keeping track of is the enemy Diva, because you don't want your fire strikes to get eaten. I'm going to get to that later when I talk about Diva. Another thing is balance your shield health with your base health. This is something that's really important for you to learn. When you have shield health, even if you push up all the way up to the enemy, you can just hold up your shield and your healers and your dps can push up help you take that space and your healers can heal you up as long as they're protected by your shield now if you push all the way up to the enemy and you have no shield health then all of a sudden your shield's gonna break you get shattered you could get naded you can't protect your team so they can't push up with you you need to make sure that you allow your body to take a good percentage of that damage by balancing your shield health and your base health perfectly you can balance your shield health get up to the enemy get healed up and then you just swing in when you can to put pressure in but learning how to balance the two is a big part of Ryan the next thing that you need to do in your games instantly is don't fire strike when the enemy Ryan has a shatter it's really important for you to keep track of the enemy Ryan shatter because if he has it you need to play completely differently and if you fire strike the enemy Ryan can actually react to it with the shatter so that's something that you can do in your games if the enemy Ryan fire strikes right in front of you instantly respond to it with the earth shatter and he's not gonna be able to block it you could shatter his whole team a lot of Reinhardt's especially at the low ranks just do this all the time it's a really atrocious mistake but it happens all the time and the reason that it keeps happening is there's not enough people that punish it so people don't learn but if you know this right off the bat just abuse the heck out of some rhymes with it and you're gonna get some free team fight wins i guarantee it and then the last thing you need to understand about hitting shatters is analyze shield health bubbles and other cooldowns when deciding to shatter if the enemy ryan has low shield health how close is it to breaking do they have bubbles zara bubbles that can block the shatter those are things you should keep track of 
Is there something like a Brig Stun or a McCree Flashbang that can interrupt your Shatter when you try? Keeping track of all these different things can allow you to tick check marks on when you should Shatter. Not every Shatter is going to be successful, but if things line up for you, those Shatters will be way more successful and you'll just carry more and more fights. Now, if you want to learn how to carry fights from an Overwatch League pro player, on GameLeap.com we're about to upload a San Francisco Shock Super Brine Breakdown. If you want to see in-depth tips and tricks and insights from one of the best friends in the world, definitely come check it out. You won't regret it. Now moving on to the next character on our list, we have our first support, which is Ana. So Ana is a high value support who can win fights with proactive plays like Nade and Nano. The really cool thing about Ana is she really emphasizes that they're actually supports, not just healers. They provide additional value to team fights, and Ana brings that to the highest level. Her heals are not her important thing. Yes, she does bring really high at burst amount of heals, but she does other things better. She can actually contest Faras and other enemies. She can make these insane nade plays. If you nade an enemy Rhine, he's almost assuredly going to die if they don't cleanse it with bubble. If they don't have bubbles to cleanse that Rhine, he's almost always going to die in a team fight. So looking to actually anti the back wall of enemies is really powerful. And I'm breaking that down in a J. Jonak guide. Definitely check that out because it's going to show you exactly what J. Jonak does to carry these team fights. Splashing the back wall and anting everyone underneath it is very powerful. If you practice nading in like a practice range, you can definitely carry fights on that. Another thing that you should look to do a lot is if you don't have any nano combos, like something really powerful like Nano Blade, look to nano your Rhine and tell him when you're going to nano him because a Rhine that's nanoed in this meta, especially if you have a Lucio to speed him in, is incredibly powerful. He just gets to swing in for free. He gets to get these insane shatters. Very powerful thing to do. Definitely look to do that. Another thing that you should really keep track of is D.Va. You need to not allow your nades and your sleep darts to get eaten by D.Va. That is really problematic for you and she's going to be looking to do it the whole time. So definitely keep track of where her positioning is. Now, the next thing I need to tell you about on is your positioning. So something you should do in a lot of different situations is start on the high ground, especially if you're playing on defense, start on the high ground somewhere because what Ana can do is she could play safe from the high ground. There'll be some team compositions that playing on the high ground is really strong because they can't come and contest you. You know, if they're playing something with their team, something like a May, you're playing the high ground, it's hard for her to come and get you. So the thing that's really powerful with the high ground is mid fight. If you need to, you can just jump right down. You go straight to low ground, you use gravity, you get straight to low ground, you're in a good position again if you have to get to the low ground. But if you start on the low ground and you find out that it's actually pretty powerful to be on the high ground, you can't transition mid fight. Ana doesn't have something like exo boots or anything like that. So she needs to be starting at the high ground and you can adjust instantly if you need to. And then you can always re transition if you win the team fight. And the last tip I have for you on Ana is use your sight lines and LOS to get the most impact out of Ana. Something powerful about her healing is you could do it from any range. This is super powerful. So you could be playing extremely far back. As long as the enemy team doesn't have multiple divers, you could be playing in a really far back safe positioning where it's hard for enemies to deal with you or do any damage to you. Another really cool thing you could do is actually play in the LOS of your allies but play completely out of the LOS of enemies, taking a cross LOS. Think of it like an L, where you're behind natural cover, completely pretty far away, and you can only see your allies, you can't even see the enemies. And when you want to, you can peek the enemy, try to get a value nade, and then go straight back to only looking at your allies. You're basically playing in a way that the enemy doesn't even get LOS of you, but you're still healing your allies and being like this constant healing force, building up ult charge, being completely safe, things like that. Now we're gonna move on to the next DPS on our list, which is actually Tracer. And the reason that Overwatch League pros are getting so much value at a tracer is if you can 1v1 the enemy dps or support or whatever you literally could just hard carry the game i mean tracer just does so much against enemies that are not playing a brig i mean i think that tracer is just one of the best dps in this meta as long as the enemy's not playing a brig so sometimes they whip it out and you just have to swap off but if they're not playing a brig tracer is so amazing because tracer can 1v1 all the dps in the game i mean you might be thinking oh mccree hanzo's these characters are kind of scary but the thing about tracer is with her actual range fall off you could do a lot of McCrees. You can play safely in that 15 meter range or close to it outside of the McCree's flashbang, which is only about seven meters. So you can really do a lot of damage to the McCree. If the McCree can't hit consistent shots on you and you have all your blinks, you're going to just destroy. Another thing about Hanzo is Hanzo has a hard time dueling a tracer as long as you engage him with all your cooldowns. And that's something that's really important. Make sure you engage when you have the most amount of cooldowns. I can't tell you how many people I've VOD reviewed and they use like two or three cooldowns just to bridge the gap between them and someone they want to duel like a supporter or a dps what you want to do is route or hide in places where you can engage a mccree or a hanzo or an on or a zen or whatever when you have two or three blinks and your recall you don't want to use these abilities to bridge the gap because if you do you're not going to have them to duel the enemy if you can get right up top on top of mccree 
and you have all three of your blinks in your recall, you could do like 50 damage, blink, 50 damage, blink, 50 damage, blink, melee, recall, and then you're just going to win the fight. And he has very little counterplay, which is really important if you only have one blink or no blinks you're gonna just die to his flashbang you're gonna have to force out your recall and get no value and then you're gonna be useless in the fight it's all about how much you can get done in a small burst of time with tracer so make sure that you have as many cooldowns as possible before you engage and then another thing that we have to talk about is the fact that you don't necessarily have to take these one v ones all the time farming ryan's and divas bring a lot of value i mean tracer's really good at farming divas getting her d mech you could chase her around a lot of times divas think that they can zoom in and zoom out and then they're safe but if they zoom out at low health you can save your blinks and just go and chase her down dmech her that brings a lot of value to the table it's worth trading your abilities and your recall to dmech a diva and then another thing you could farm rhines because you could actually blink into a shield you can pulse bomb them things like that and that's another thing if you watch my spb vod review investing blinks to help secure both bombs is just amazing to do and you should always do it blink in pulse bomb an enemy blink out pulse bombing from close range is way more consistent don't try to lob these insane long distance pulse bombs because they're not going to be consistent and you want to be as consistent as possible because pulse bombs is how you hard carry tons of fights i mean you use all your abilities to duel one enemy you pulse bomb another oftentimes you can get your cooldowns back it's just extremely powerful and it's worth it to couple a couple of blinks or one blink with your pulse bomb to guarantee it's sticking as opposed to just trying to lob it and then missing it like over 50% of the time. Now let's move on to the next tank on our list. This is another character that Overwatch League pros have been dominating ranked with and it's D.Va. So the reason that D.Va's seeing play right now is she's just so good at so many things. I mean, she brings so much value to the table. She can eat all these high impact abilities. She can contest DPS. There's just so much she brings to the table. But let me give you some big tips that you could start implementing in your games right now if you want to start dominating with D.Va. I know I just gave a review you should definitely go check that out but the first thing that you need to understand is when your ride swings in especially when you're up against enemies that have Ana or things like that you really want to dm to protect him from nades that's something that's really important keeping track of things that can sleep him or nade him or things like that are really powerful on diva because it's your job to prevent him from getting anti especially when you're diva not zara because if your ryan gets anti and your zarya you can bubble him and cleanse him so he it gets rid of the actual anti but if you're diva and your ryan gets anti sure you could dm him but it's not going to protect him against a ryan swing which is what the ryan's going to want to do to kill him to finish him off when he's anteed so it's really problematic if he does get anteed so really you should try to eat the nade is what i'm saying that's very very important and then another thing is besides just eating nades and more orbs look to eat enemy fire strikes with diva you can basically cut off a lot of the enemy ryan's ultimate charge if you eat a lot of his fire strikes it gives the edge to your ryan in the ryan v ryan matchup which is so important in this meta if you can eat all the fire strikes and he hits decent amount of fire strikes he's gonna get ult maybe 30 or 40 percent more than the other ryan on average another thing that you should really do is you can contest isolated targets especially on the high ground you know a hanzo flaking a mccree flank taking an off angle diva is one of the few characters where you can actually chase a mccree even if he goes out of los because you can eat a lot of his damage he can't burst you down easy easy like if you're something like a tracer or even another mccree it's kind of risky to pursue an enemy mccree when you can't see him anymore diva's better at that as long as you're not taking two targets at once you want to make sure that you're only zoning them away sometimes if they have peel or heal or something you don't want to full commit because that's an easy way to get demacked and you can also inch your positioning closer to where you're close enough to an enemy to where you can missiles boost into them and burst them down out of nowhere another thing that you need to really think about when playing diva is treat your mech like it's your life okay do not throw away your mech and that's something that a lot of low rank divas do they just like willy-nilly just fly in you know get some value and get demacked and they think oh that's good enough it's fine I'm still alive, but the thing is, if you do not have your mech for a team fight, you're essentially throwing. I mean, Mini Diva just does so little to a team fight. I mean, it's understandable if you can't help it, but it can't even be a liability if you get staggered. Just treat your mech like it's your life. Don't throw it away. And then the last thing that you should do if you really want to master Diva, and this is something that Poco does immensely well. I mean, I don't know for those of you who know Poco in the Philadelphia Fusion, but he's so good at this. He goes into practice ranges and practice Diva bombing spots. That's why he's so good at getting these insane diva bombs because if you practice how to throw your diva bomb that can give you the edge up in competitions i mean how many games have people won just due to some huge diva bomb 
Imagine if you just practice, you just put in a little bit of time and you got insanely good at putting a diva bomb exactly where you want to. You never waste a diva bomb. You're just going to win a whole bunch of games because of it. And that could be 100, 200, 300 SR, which might up you a whole rank. So definitely practice diva bomb spots. If you want to be good at diva in this meta, diva is one of the best tanks. So just take a little bit of practice out of your schedule and it will really pay off in dividends. Now, moving on to the next support on our list, we have Lucio. So the reason that Lucio's played is pretty obvious. I mean, he's been one of the best characters in the game for a long time. And if you want to get characters to places faster, Lucio's just the best for that. And the reason that Lucio's the best at that is speed boost is insane. It just is. And Lucio brings a lot of other things to the table that I really want to talk about. The first thing that you need to learn about Lucio is the duality of Lucio. I talked about this before, the duality of Lucio, the duality of Genji. But the two versions of Lucio that I want to talk about is there's a certain time when you want to duel enemies and be aggressive. And there's a certain time that you want to peel. Learning how to switch between them and when one is necessary over the other is the hallmark of a great Lucio. Sometimes you need to peel for your honor because she's getting farmed and it's worth a lot of value to to keep her alive and protect her other times it's really powerful for you to go contest the Widowmaker that's on the right high ground maybe your team composition is something like a Zarya a Mei and a Reaper and you don't really have any DPS that can afford to go duel her but you can in the mid fight and in certain situations so learning how to do that and when to do that is very powerful now another thing that you should start doing on Lucio this is specifically only for the low ranks because I know high rank players already do this is just you need to wall climb all the time Wall climbing makes it harder for enemies to anti you a lot of times because they could just anti just you, but often they want to anti the whole team. If you're playing right behind the Rhine, it's really easy for you to get antied. Wall climbing protects you against things like shatter and all kinds of abilities. So definitely wall climb all the time. Another thing that you should start doing is playing Lucio in tryhard free for all. And I know what you might be thinking. Why would I play Lucio in tryhard free for all? There's going to be DPS, Doomfist, McCree's all over the place. Here's the thing. I've run into a whole bunch of Lucios, top 500 Lucios in tryhard free for all, and they've gotten like second, third, sometimes even first place because they're so insane at dueling. They know exactly how to hit the head. They know how to duel enemies, make themselves really hard to hit, you know, some DSP stanky type stuff. That is what you want to maximize on Lucio because it can really help you climb. I mean, all the Overwatch League Lucios don't really do this that much in Overwatch League games, but they all know how to do this in ladder because that's one of the best ways to climb. Lucio is a really synergistic based character, but you all know in ranked, sometimes synergy isn't good enough. Sometimes it's better to just frag out, get insane boops. One v1 enemies that's way better because sometimes the synergy aspect doesn't work and if you can practice lucio and try to free for all you're going to be better at this now the last thing i got to talk about is kind of a really weird one but it's important for you to apply in your games sometimes it's better to beat aggressively than it is to save for grab dragon i think i've played about seven or eight games so far this week that my lucio has actually beaten a grab and we've all died anyways if the enemy grab dragons and the enemy ryan is swinging into us you're gonna die even if you beat so you you want to try to beat at the very end. The first thing you need to do is do this thing called squeezing. And that is beat at the last possible moment because it gives you the most amount of health. It's the most likely chance that you're actually going to live. Or if you notice that you can't beat late enough to where you're going to save anybody. Like if you if you beat too late to actually get the beat value, your whole team's going to die. Then you should just save your beat and then just beat into the enemy when you can be aggressive. Because at the end of the day, it's about team fights one, not necessarily winning and protecting yourself against every combo. Because like I said, if the enemy grab dragons and you beat and you die, it's just going to be way better if you would have just saved that beat for another fight. You could have won a free fight off of it. So learning how to differentiate when you should use it, when you should don't, and maximizing the concept of squeezing is a way that you can get so much more value on Lucio. Now we're going to move on to the last character that pro players are abusing over and over again and it's your favorite character i mean every time you see this on the other team i'm sure that all of y'all are jumping with joy but it's may it's just the community loved hero may is just amazingly fun to play against and to play with i mean everyone loves her but i'm going to tell you some tips that can really help you pop off with her and just be extremely annoying for the enemy team because that's just what you want to do on may so the first thing is you should try to abuse the enemy ryan ryan's going to be played the most in this meta and the thing about ryan is he wants to push in he wants to be aggressive if you can wall him off it's a free kill that's just plain and simple if the ryan cannot bait your wall and they don't have something like immortality or some ultimates walling him off is a free kill so look to do it it's really easy it's really simple hide in the first fight you usually win a free fight off the ryan just inting in and then as long as you have wall discipline you're going to be able to get him later on and just get so much value out of your wall the second thing is don't let a diva or a lucio or anything that has mobility bait your wall keep in mind things that are crossing the wall that have no mobility and things that do things like hanzos things like divas they can just jump the wall bait over the wall those are not characters that are worth walling off so you really need to differentiate 
characters that can actually go over the wall and dodge out of the wall and things like that and characters that can't it's important to make that distinction and it will help you have better wall discipline the next thing that you need to do on may is really watch out for mccree's flashbang especially when you're pushing up on the enemy line keep in mind that you should almost never be out in the front of your team because the enemy is going to break through the wall the second you wall off the rhine and they're going to throw a flashbang through the broken part and you could be the first target. So I know you want to push up aggressively, but it's better if your tanks do it. You could push up to an extent, but you can play kind of far back and just freeze the enemy Ryan instead of just inting in. Just be really careful with the McCree's flash because he's going to be looking out for you trying to punish you. The second thing is understand when sometimes you just have to use the wall to reset. If the enemy on it gets a really big nade, like a two or three person nade, especially if it's your tanks, sometimes you just need to use your wall just to reset, let the anti wear off. I know you're not getting that much value out of it, but you're preventing the enemy from pushing in aggressively and killing your Rhine, which even if you wall the enemy Rhine off, but your Rhine dies in the process, it could be really problematic because the enemy Rhine could just back up and kite. It's going to be hard to punish him and then you're probably going to lose. So sometimes just using the wall to reset is the best use. And then the last thing that I need to tell you to do is Divas in particular are really annoying for Blizzard. They can eat your Blizzard and you don't want them to eat your Blizzard, pretty obviously. So what you want to do is you want to either zone her away or freeze her before you Blizzard. That just ensures that the Diva is not going to eat your Blizzard. The thing is, some, some Divas are really cheeky with it and they will boost her away and then boost her back and try to eat. So really keeping track of her DM is the best way to ensure that none of your Blizzards get eaten. And that's just how you get a lot of value out on May. But if you want to see Grandmaster and Pro VOD reviews that break down the thought process of any of the characters on these lists, you definitely need to check out GameLeap.com. We're stacked to the brim with VOD reviews and I'm pumping out even more VOD reviews based on these characters from Overwatch League games. So do yourself a favor and go check us out. You won't regret it. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you want to see some VOD reviews about any character on this list, just let me know and I can upload it to YouTube, give you a little taste of what it's like on the GameLeap website. That's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 